In this video, I'm gonna show you how pen testers actually use Python to automate what we do every day, right? Because if you've spent any time at all in this space, you've probably heard a lot of pen testers say, oh, I use Python to automate my workflow. But what does that actually mean? What does that actually look like, right? So we're gonna take a deep dive into that in this video. I'll show you a very practical example of how I would actually use Python on a pen test to automate something. There's eventually gonna come a point in time where you're gonna be ready to interview for jobs. And definitely at that point, you're going to want to be armed with the top 10 questions that you need to know to ace a cybersecurity pen testing interview. So check out the description below and you'll find very detailed answers to all these top 10 interview questions and some additional resources to take it one step further. I have the intelligence box uh, from Hack the Box. And we see there's a website running on port 80. And if we just do some basic discovery for that using GoBuster, we can try and find, you know, is there anything, any hidden files or directories? And that's where I would start. So if I just run a GoBuster dir, pass in the URL and the word list that I'm going to use in this case will be user share sec list discovery web content raf small words dot txt and we won't worry about extensions for now we'll do that with 50 threads and let it run and immediately we see there is a documents folder so let's look in that and see if we can brute force anything from the documents and with that being said let's also look for some file extensions here what are common documents right we could have a text file we could have a pdf something like that so we'll start with those two and we'll look but basically to save us all time here we're not able to find any files or folders in here based on this word list and if we go back to the website and we view the page source, one of the things that we will notice as I zoom in here for you guys are specific files in this documents folder. Now, first of all, if we try to navigate to documents, we actually get a 403 forbidden because you know there's no directory listing or anything available, but we might be able to access these actual files. So. I see some JPEGs, some PDFs. That could be interesting, right? The fact that there's PDF files in here. Probably the images are not as interesting. They're just the assets that we saw on the page here, on the home page, right? But the PDFs, that is something that's quite a bit more interesting. So if I just go into that, so if I just go into this one here, you see this format here. You have a year month and a date, right? You see, we only see two of these referenced, but there could be more PDFs here, right? So if we go to this directory, we see this here, if we take it out of view page source, you know, it's a bunch of binary data because it is a PDF. But then if we come here, we can see it rendered in PDF format. So there could very well be more of these PDFs that exist. So we want to find out what all is available. So we, we want to use Python here to automate this, right? Because it could be 03, 15, 04, 17, you know, who knows which ones could be available. So let's use Python for that. So that's what we're going to automate here. And then once we do that, once we grab all the files, then we'll download all the PDFs automatically using Python. These are all things we can very easily script out. No point in doing this manually. This is the perfect use case for Python. So I'm going to create a file called discover.py. And we're going to use the request library for this. But first, let's just start off by trying to build out those files. So if I go back to the web page right here and looking at the page source once again, let's take this because you notice that between this one and this one, they have a common structure, right? Like I said, year, month, date, so, uh, dash upload.pdf. That is the format. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to bring it in to Python. 
as a comment so I can keep this in mind. This is the structure of the file that I'm trying to build out. So let's build a couple functions here, right? So the first one will be months. The second one will be days. And, uh, and then we're going to do some other things after that, right? So first we're going to build out this list. We'll just stop here for now and uh, try to build out the list. So we're going to use a for loop to do that. The year will, we're just going to look in 2020. Um, if we need to, we can adjust the year as well and have a function for that. So let's create a for loop and say for i in range 1 to 13 because there's 12 months print i and let's just verify that this is doing what we think it's doing, right? And so this doesn't error out. We'll just type pass here. So now let's call the function. So I'm going to have a main function if name equal equal main. Then we'll run months. Okay. And so we'll save that and we'll just go ahead now and run this file. And we see it listed out 1 through 12. However, there's a problem, right? Because for anything under 10, we have this zero appended here. So we're going to have to account for that in the script. Now, how do we do that? It's actually quite simple. We're just going to add a if statement here. And we're going to say if i is less than 10, then we are going to Instead, print, let's assign it to the variable i first. So we'll just say i will be equal to 0 um, we'll say 0 and then i. And just like that. So now what we should see is the, the zeros will be appended. Um, of course, we need an else statement here. And we need the print statement. <laughs> so a lot going on here, but do that. And then we'll print I. So this is the code that we should need for this. This should be all we need. And I know, let me just make this a little larger for you guys. So what we're saying here is that if uh, I is less than 10, we're just going to add a zero in front of I. Else we're just going to print it as is. So now we run that. And perfect. We see that the zeros have been appended for all the things under 10. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to loop through all the days. It could be up to 31 days in a month, right? So what we'll say is for I in range 1 to 32. And then we'll say if I is less than 10, same thing. We can actually just... Copy paste all this part here. So we'll do that and let it run. And we got to call it, of course. I'm just going to call days here instead. Run it. And there we go. We built out that as well. So now what do we need to do, right? The next thing that we're going to want to do is actually, you know, get the files, right? So we can define a function and we'll call it get page. And before we get into that, we have the base URL. We're going to use the request library because that is the easiest library, in my opinion, to use for making HTTP requests in Python. And we'll create a variable called base URL. And we'll just go ahead and set that equal to, uh, oops, we'll set that equal to the URL that we're dealing with, which is, if I come here, th this part, because this part will always be the same, the IP address slash documents. So we're just going to take that whole chunk as our base URL. And we'll put that in here. And now what I'm going to do actually is instead of printing the months, 
I'm going to pass that into the days function. So instead of print i, we'll just say days i to call this function. And we'll have it accept a parameter called month. And we'll do the same thing here, calling the function, passing the value of i into the days function. And what I'm going to do after I assign this value i here on days, I'm going to go ahead and create another variable called file because now we have everything we need to build out the file. So if we look up here, right, this is the format that we, are, we need to follow. So I'll use a format string and I'll say 2020 dash the month variable that we got from the previous function. That's why we passed it in. And then our value of I and then upload PDF. Okay. And we could do the same thing in the else statement as well. So now what I'm going to do is instead of printing I, I'm going to print file. And we'll get into the get page in just a second. Let's just verify that this works. And so what we should see is a list of all the file names. So we'll run that. And looks like I am missing one parameter days is missing month. So if I just take a look here, file file. So it says line 29. Oh, sorry. I don't want to call days. I want to call month and it'll kick off the whole thing for me. Months rather. There we go. Run that. And now we, I mean, we have two print statements going on. <laughs> That's why it's a little confusing here probably. So where's the other print statement? Uh, yeah, just get rid of this print I. We don't need it anymore. And now if I do that and I run it, we'll see we have a list of all the files, which is basically every single day in the year 2020 dash upload dot PDF. So perfect. We have all of them. Now what we want to do is make HTTP requests to all of these files. So how will we do that? Well, this is where we'll use the request module and we have the base URL set up already. We have this function get page. Now, instead of printing off the files, what we'll instead want to do is pass the file parameter to get page. So we'll have this take one parameter that we call file and we'll pass that parameter into the function. So get page. And uh, I'll just go ahead, copy this and paste this here as well. So we have the file variable assigned. We're going to pass it in to this get page function. And that's where the heavy lifting is going to happen. So we will set our URL equal to base URL, right? Because the base URL is always going to be the same. So base URL plus the file, because that's just the file name. So that'll give us the full thing that we need. And um, keep in mind, that is why I have the slash at the end of the base URL here. So once we do that is where we start using the request stuff. And you can refer to the documentation if you need additional information on why I'm using the syntax that I'm using, but I'm going to sign a, I'm going to create a variable R assign it to request.get URL. This is how I make a get request using the request module. And I'll assign another variable. I'll call it status code because we want to check the status code, right? We want to see, is it a 200 okay? Is it a 404? Is it a 403? And all we care about is if it is not a 404. So we'll do a status code will be equal to r.statuscode because that is a built-in function. This, this status code here, I know this could be kind of confusing. This is just a custom variable I created on the left. This is a built-in method to the request module that allows us to strip out the info on what was the status code of this get request. Okay, so don't get confused by that. Oops. So once we have the status code, here's where we'll perform the check. 
So if status code is not equal to 404, because I don't mind if it's a 302 or a 403 even, because that confirms to us at least that the file exists. So as long as it's not a 404, I want to know about it. So that's when I'll say print URL. If it's a 404, I don't even care to, to know about it, right? I just want to know about the ones that aren't 404. So that is why I write it like this. And yeah, let's just go through that. This is single threaded, keep in mind, so not the fastest, most performant code, but it should get the job done. And you see here, it's working because it's skipping over certain dates, the ones that don't exist, uh, don't have PDFs in them, right? So now, perfect, we're actually using this to discover these PDF files uh, programmatically through Python. So we've essentially just automated that. Now, a lot of the job is well done, but what if we want to take that a step further, you know? What if we wanted to actually go the extra effort of downloading that file? Well, it's actually quite simple. I am happy to report. Now, I could, in a few lines of code, write this output to a file if I wanted to as well, but let's go a step further and let's actually download this content, download these PDF files. So if I define a function, we'll call it download file. And we will take two parameters. We'll take R, we'll take file. So R is like the response from re the request module. And let's, instead of printing the URLs here, or actually we will print the URLs just so we can see it for debug purposes and so we know it's running. But outside of this, we want to just go ahead and call the download file option. So... I'm going to print it, and then in that point, we want to download the file. So call download file, passing in these two parameters here. And so inside of this function, what we would need to do is we can just say f open file in write binary mode. Because remember, this was binary data we're dealing with. These PDF files are binary, so we have to have the uh, wb for write binary. And then we'll just do f.write to write to the file. And we'll use the content method within uh, requests. So we'll access that content through r.content. And then we'll go ahead and close the file. And this is going to keep getting called over and over again because it's um, running through the this for loop here. So it should recursively download all of our files if I did everything uh, correctly. And I'm naming the file, whatever the file name is here. That is why I have file here because I want them all to be uniquely named and saved. So let's just go ahead and run that and see if everything works correctly. Now through the print statements, we'll just keep seeing what we we're seeing before. But now if you look on the left, you see all of these PDFs coming in. And while we're waiting on this, I'm going to go ahead and open folder and I'm going to browse to this directory that I'm in right now. And now we see all these files and we can actually go into them and open them and start reading them. There you go. So we can access any of these files. Now we have successfully downloaded all these files. We discovered them, we've automated the discovery process and we've automated the download process as well. And if I do a directory listing here, you can see all these downloaded files we could go through. And maybe we want a script to go through them even more efficiently, but I'll leave that for another time for you guys. So hopefully this was of help to you guys. Let me know down in the comment section below if you want to see more of this content or what your thoughts are. And if you're ready to get into some technical content, I have that on the screen for you right now. See you right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.